Okay, welcome. Today we have Patrice McArthur, who is the author of this wonderful book, The Work of Our Hands, The Universal Gift of Creativity. Welcome, Patrice. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm a freelance writer and editor. I've been uh, doing that for about 20 years now. Um, I also have three children who I homeschool. Two of them are grown. I'm still homeschooling my teenage daughter. Um, I work primarily to promote the Catholic faith, uh, creativity, homeschooling. I have a lot of interests. <laughs> Very good. So I let's get into the book. Sure. Uh, before we really get into the specifics, how would you define creativity? I think people tend to have a narrow vision of creativity. We think of people who are artists or writers or m movie makers, um, that sort of thing. Um, but I really think as being created in the image of God, we're all called to be creators with him. We're co-creators. Um, so our whole lives are really a creation. I try to take a very holistic view of creativity. Yeah, on page 109, you write, yet in bestowing on all of us the gift of creativity, God also entrusts us with the responsibility to use it. Explain right. our responsibility to create. Right. Um, each of us, just by being alive, we're building this world that we live in uh, through our families, through every we, whatever we do for work, um, how we treat other people, the words we say. Everything we do is really part of that creation and that creative process. And so we do have a responsibility to use it wisely and Perhaps we don't think about that enough. You know, we go through our daily lives just kind of plodding through. And I know I'm as guilty as that of, as anyone. Um, but there, there is a responsibility inherent in those creative gifts. So how do we how do we orient ourselves or set ourselves up to receive inspiration? How do we become aware or predisposed to that inspiration? I definitely think turning to the Holy Spirit is a good way to do that. Um, Throughout history, the Holy Spirit has always been considered that source of inspiration. And especially through the gifts we receive at baptism and those of us who are confirmed through confirmation. Um, the Holy Spirit is always waiting to help us. So we just need to ask even a simple prayer, come Holy Spirit. Um, or praying before you do something, before you have to have a difficult conversation, before you sit at a computer to write something, whether it be an email or you know a creative work, whatever. Um, Asking the Holy Spirit to guide our efforts, I think, is a good way to center ourselves and do that. So you seem to be saying that even when we have a conversation, we we can create a mood. Yes, absolutely. Even how we treat other people, we can mm -hmm. sort of create a feeling or an impression. Yes, yes, 100 percent. You know how the, the words that we say, you know, this conversation we're having right now is an act of creativity. Um, and so it does have some weight to it. And it's important to bring God into all things. Yes, as a teacher myself, although I taught in public schools, I'm, I'm aware of what you're saying, you know, trying to create a at certain atmosphere in the classroom by mm -hmm. what I say. Certainly, uh, teaching is such an important profession. And, you know, the encouragement you give your students, that lasts a lifetime. Do you think there's a relationship between creativity and silence? Absolutely. Um, silence, spending time and quiet can really give you a chance to reflect. It's something we don't get a lot of in our modern world. There's noise everywhere and people are often prone to, you know, popping in earbuds or headphones or, you know, listening to a video. I'm going for a walk. I'm going to listen to a podcast while I'm doing that or what have you. But in silence and boredom, you can often come into those creative ideas that you might not otherwise. On page, on page 58, you write about courage. Mm -hmm. What's the relationship between courage and creativity? It can be hard to be a creative person, um, especially in the sense of the more, more traditional creative arts. You know, when people think about creating a painting or creating a book or what have you, because that's inherently personal. You're putting yourself out there in that work of art or 
on that page and then people respond and they may not always respond in a kind manner. Um, people may be critical of what you've done. They may tear you apart. So it really does take a certain amount of courage to put yourself out there. Um, okay, so finish the sentence for me, if you will. God gave us the gift of creativity so that we can... Uh, Co-create with him and build this world. Uh, he gives us that responsibility. And it's a big one. I mean, we look around at our world and we can see, you know, a lot of negative things. But we can also see a lot of positive things. People trying to do good every day and really work to build the world, build our families, care for our children, um, be ethical in our workplaces. You know, in the case of you, educate children in a classroom, um, care for our earth. All of these are uh, creative acts that God has asked us to take responsibility for, you know, ever since the Garden of Eden, where he, you know, gave Adam and Eve um, care over the earth. Uh, so whether you take that as a literal story or a figurative one, you know that that message is still there, that we are the caretakers of the earth. You know, what's emerging for me, you know, as I listen to what you're saying is that um, the uh, the stance of creativity, it starts, it, it, it seems to be a positive stance. Mm -hmm. There's a positivity about creativity. I would say that's coming out that I'm detecting mm -hmm. in your I mean, answer. You hope so. I mean, we can also, unfortunately, be destructive and tear things down. Um, but ideally, we're using our creative gifts for good. Um, in, in the unbridgeable gap, you speak about the finished product. Mm -hmm. but how do we know when a product is done? What, at what point do you say, okay, time to move on? Yeah, that is always the challenge, isn't it? Um, and I think it was, uh, Pope St. John Paul II, who had, who had written about that, you know, that the space between the idealized vision in our head. I know when I set out to write something, I have such a wonderful view of how this is going to be and what comes out is never quite as good um, no matter how hard I try or how many times it goes through editing or revisions and eventually it's just like okay lord it's as good as I can get it you know and I'm going to put this out in the world um, sometimes people really get stuck I work as an editor as well um, so it's also guiding other people in their writing process sometimes people really get stuck with not wanting to put something that's perfect that's not perfect out into the world. And because, you know, we're human and we never quite get to that sense of perfection, um, that can be really hard to let go and say, yep, this is done. I'm gonna put it out there and move on to the next thing. Uh, so that's definitely a challenge, something to take, you know, in prayer. Um, and also, as we spoke about with courage, <laughs> to say, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna, see what people have to say about it, that can be definitely a challenge. I don't think this is in your book, but um, do you see in your work and in your prayer and your thoughts, do you see, now I'm not, I know that we could all be creative in different mm -hmm. ways, even in our conversations and in our setting a tone at the dinner table, preparing food, which everybody can do. But mm -hmm. those of us that have the gifts of, um, say, as you say, writing or painting, writing music. Mm -hmm. Do you see any correlation between that level of creativity and let's say age or uh, circumstance? Are, are there any correlations or is it? Um, I think everyone has that gift. I mean, especially if you spend time with children, uh, they always are eager to create in whatever way, you know, whether it be with clay or paint or playing music. And they don't have that inner judge that we tend to develop as we age. Uh, they are much more spontaneous. Um, so that's a wonderful gift and trying to nurture children. I know you said you taught high school, you know, as they move into their teen years and then into adulthood, that inner judge gets so much stronger where it, it condemns you and says, no, this isn't good enough. You shouldn't put this out there. Um, why try if you can't be good at it? Uh, people sometimes say, oh, no, I'm not an artist. You know, I'm not even going to attempt to paint something or attempt to write something because it's not good. I can't spell well. I can't use punctuation well. So I'm not even going to try. 
Um, so I think there's something to be said for getting to that root of creativity in each of us and expressing it in some way and being willing to be bad at things um, and to do them just for the sake of enjoyment. Um, by way of example, I've been trying to learn how to play the piano for two or three years now. I use like the Simply Piano app <laughs> and I am not good at this at all, um, but, I, but it's something I enjoy and it is a different way of expressing myself creatively. Um, yeah, so it's always, you know, as we age to still be willing to try new things and have yes. that spontaneity, I think is good. Yeah. And, you know, when you step outside your comfort zone, you never know where it might lead. That's true. That is very true. <laughs> I put up some tiles in my kitchen the other day and it was <laughs> something very outside of my area of expertise. It came out nice. It really stretched me. I had a lot to, a lot of watch of, uh, of YouTube videos and <laughs> and really talk to the guy at Home Depot and pray about it and but it came out okay but i good. i don't know if i'll ever do it again but i i stretched myself and i felt uh -huh. good about it yeah yeah exactly and we're so fortunate today that there are so many youtube videos and people out there willing to share their expertise so that if you want to learn something you can find how to do it and you can give it a try in the privacy of your own home which is wonderful i wanted to ask you about what do you think about the um the level of creativity in our contemporary society I think there are a lot of creative people. We have the opportunity to share so much more than we ever got to share. I think in previous generations where there were so many more gatekeepers, like you had to have a traditional publisher if you were going to publish a book. Um, if you wanted to share your photographs with people, sure, you could carry them around and show people, or you could have a slideshow uh, when people came over. But now you can post them on Facebook or on X and, or Instagram and people can see them. So you can share your creativity with a wide variety. You know, all the young people making TikToks, it may not be a form of creativity that speaks to me, but it's definitely a form of creativity where they're, you know, doing these dances or they're sharing, you know, whatever they're doing with their friends. Uh, so we do have that opportunity to share our creativity in ways that previous generations couldn't even have imagined, um, which is great. But, but on the other hand, we spend so much time with technology, uh, with our phones, listening to podcasts, listening, you know, watching videos that some of that time that normally would have been used for creative pursuits is instead just spent taking in information. Um, so there's definitely, you know, the pros and cons of living in this digital era that we live. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting, for me anyway, an interesting thing. You can look at it from both sides. Uh -huh. You brought up some good points. Mm. But um, I also see like a sort of um, lessening of creativity in some ways with, you know, with AI and, and mm -hmm. people getting AI to write papers and create right. photographs, mm -hmm. create yeah. works of art. I AI hope we don't a, lose okay. that. I hope that it doesn't. <laughs> Because we're at the beginning of AI, you know? Right. We don't know how this is going to play out. You don't know how it's going to play out. But when people start to do AI-generated stuff, mm -hmm. to me, it's taken, it's taking away from that human creativity. Right. I know. I see some of the AI art, and, you know, some of it, sure, you can laugh at, like, okay, yeah, that person has, like, six fingers or what have you. But some of it is really beautiful, and... I understand the temptation to use those prompts and, and create. And in, and in a way, it is still creating because you're coming up with these prompts and seeing what comes back and then you alter your prompts. So, I mean, it is still a creative act. But yeah, you're absolutely right where it's taking that human component of someone actually creating those artworks out of the picture. And the same thing for writing where you can put in a prompt and AI can come back with like this whole story. And it's like, uh, okay, <laughs> but... <laughs> I don't know. We're as you said, we're just at the beginning and trying to figure out where where this will all go. I don't mean to be negative, of course, but it's you know, it's true that a lot of I wonder how they'll look back on this time that we're living in as far as mm -hmm. creativity goes. Mm -hmm. It's true. There's no way to know. Right? <laughs> you mentioned about self publishing. I think you pub your book is self published, isn't it? It is. Yes. How and how is that working out? How did it 
Can you just basically briefly tell, talk a little bit for somebody that might be interested in doing this? Sure. Um, I've self-published several books. Um, it's a wonderful way to get your words out there and to share what you want to say with other people. Uh, I'm definitely a fan of it. I think you have to go into it with reasonable expectations in terms of how many books you're going to sell. You're probably not going to have this massive big bestseller where you can quit your job. And you know, people often have those dreams. But it is a wonderful way to get your words out there. It opens up doors of opportunities. Like I want to be speaking to you today. Um, without this book and us having this conversation and hopefully sharing with some other people and getting them thinking about creativity. So you never know where it can lead to. Right. And that's partly when I was, when I found your blog and then I looked at the book, I'm interested <laughs> in creativity in general. <laughs> and I think you have a lot to say. And you, there are so many people similar to you that are sort of under the radar like on the popular Catholic stations, the same people, you know, they, they make the rounds. Right, yeah. And there are people that are sort of under the, like yourself, that have, I think, I mean, I really enjoyed the book and you have a lot of interesting things to say. And Thank hopefully, you. Uh, you know, when, when I like the way you set it up. It's sort of like there are chapters and then there's a prayer and then there's like a call to action. Uh -huh. and, yes, it was meant uh, to be a sort of at-home retreat that people could do if they so choose, you know, over the course of a month, you know, where you can take one chapter a day and reflect on it. And that's basically what I did. And then, of course, I reviewed it again when, when I was waiting for this interview. But that's, and it worked that way for me. All, all you could read a couple a day, whatever your pace okay. is. Yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and at the end, you talk about... Um, nurturing the next generation mm -hmm. and isn't that the ultimate act of creativity when you think absolutely. about it it's, absolutely <laughs> we're all only here gift. temporarily <laughs> right that's the gift that we have and it's ongoing mm -hmm. right we're so always... nurturing those creative gifts and in, in the children we encounter and the teenagers we encounter is so important so that they can carry on that torch and know that they have these gifts and the responsibility to use them because as we discussed you know it, it's both sides of the coin god gives us these gifts but we also have a responsibility to use them well you know i i don't know if you heard about uh you know the kansas city chiefs kicker the but butker the, the what he had to say sure. <laughs> at the uh at uh, benedictine <laughs> university <laughs> but what he said was actually i my wife and i have been discussing it you know and what he said was basically, you know, there, there is there is um, a beauty and a and a and a deep calling in in you know being a mother, you know, mm -hmm. the beauty of being a mother, and that's that act of sure. creation, bringing up children, right? And even with the help of God, of course, with God and the Blessed Mother, mm -hmm. you try to bring your children up. You set, you know, you set a certain tone in the house, and you try mm -hmm. to bring them along. And you try to shape them in in a way that they can become good citizens, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a twenty four hour. It is <laughs> right. Yep. And that's, that's absolutely. That's beautiful. <laughs> so, what are you working on now? Uh, right now I've been busy editing other people's work, so I don't really have any uh, works in progress at the moment. But. Okay. <laughs> So if people are interested in having some of their work edited, how would they get in touch with you? Sure. Um, I have uh, pfmacarthur.com is my editing website where they can find out more about the services I provide and cost and all those things. I'm happy to talk to anyone who's interested in okay. getting work edited. <laughs> what services do you provide? Um, I do everything from a developmental edit, which is where People will send a work in progress to get feedback on things like organization or sometimes they just have an idea and they say, OK, you know, where should I go with this um, to line edits where you're going through and you're correcting all the grammar and spelling and getting it ready for publication. The only thing is so I can really shepherd people through most of the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes a lot. That's what people need. A sounding <laughs> board. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I do because a lot of that, which I enjoy. The writing life in some ways can be a lonely life. Mm -hmm. It's a solitary life. You're writing, you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. And for non-writers in your family, they may not understand, you know, 
exactly what's going on in your head and how it works. And because I've written things myself and it can be, it's a solitary task It is. for the most part. It is. It is. Spent a lot of time in your head. Yeah. Well, listen, I've really enjoyed talking to you. And, you know, the, once again, the book, I recommend it, The Work of Our Hands. Uh, I think I got it on Amazon. That's how I yep, got it's it. available on Amazon. Um, so I created it um, to be a beautiful book. Like I was thinking like, you know, kind of like a coffee table book where it has images and full color. Yeah. Um, but as a result on Amazon, it ended up being a little bit expensive. But there is the ebook version, which is considerably less money, contains all the same information. So if people are interested in that version, yeah. that one will help you, <laughs> give you the chance to reflect on things. Yes. Here's an example. <laughs> yeah, there are many beautiful photographs. I'm old school, Patrice. I like to hold mm -hmm. the books. I do too. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of a lot of nice, uh, mm -hmm. a nice selection. <laughs> well, you know, thank you for uh, spending some time with me. Thank you so much. This was lovely. <laughs> and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Before you go, can we say a prayer for all of our listeners? Absolutely. For anybody that may be listening, for all our creative folks out there that need some inspiration or some guidance, don't give up. Uh, right. Let's keep at it. Right. Let's say, if you don't mind, let's say a brief Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, full the Lord grace, is with thee. Is with thee. Blessed art thou. Blessed thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners. Yeah, our death. Amen. Okay. Well, thanks, Patrice. Thank you. Have a great day. You as well.